Hey boys and girls, you're back again. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk mostly about the, uh, the stuff I forgot to talk about, which is the Taylor welded blanks or TWBs that are all over this car's body. First though, we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, that's where one of the cameras is and apparently there's been a problem with um, glare and whatnot. And so apparently the aperture has been closed up. We haven't had a chance to look at that, but one of you sent in a, actually a couple of you have sent in a little, little questions about that. So uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to address that a little later, but I just wanted to let you know that we're, we're not forgetting anything. We're, we're doing it right now. So let's talk about Taylor welded blanks and why they're a good idea. Can you imagine taking one great big giant piece of steel and then stamping all this stuff out and having a big hole? Um, that would be, that wouldn't be very frugal. That would be bad. So what people do is they take different sections of different thicknesses of steel and they weld them together. And that's what basically a Taylor weld the blank um, is going on. And so if we look here where I've done a, talked a little bit about the, uh, a little bit about the good welds here. If we go underneath, unfortunately you can't see it, but maybe you swing underneath. Might have to come from the other side and look up. If you look underneath, you can see that there's a little bump right here. And that's because on the inner, this material is thicker than this material. This material is heavier. And the reason for that is because of rollover. Um, the A pillar all by itself is uh, usually one of the strongest members of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the car. So this is the A pillar. And then what you've got is the, the whole thing is called the lay down body side ring. So if you have a good job or if you're doing a good job, you want to have steel where you need it. And if you don't need it, then you don't want to have it there. It just, all it does is just make, uh, make the car heavier and doesn't add any strength or anything. Sometimes it gets in the way of getting a good job done. So here we see that, that, uh, that all through here, we're looking at Taylor welded blanks on the inside. And I think they may be on the outside as well. We'll have to check that. In order to do that, we've got to take the car a little bit further apart. And that would mean drilling out uh, some of these rivets and whatnot, or sorry, not the rivets, but drilling out some of these uh, welds and then uh, having a deeper look. Now, uh, the other thing seeing as we're sitting right here is the fact that this tub, the, uh, uh, the floor mechanism or the floor is one contiguous piece. We didn't mention that last time, uh, but it's important that you know that that doesn't always happen. So this is a very good, very good idea. And it's a great way to, uh, to make it easier for the body shop to put all this stuff together. Because with the body shop, you've got lots of people, lots of robots, it's hot and it stinks. And uh, this is the kind of way that you can make uh, welds go away because I don't have to do joints, too many joints and whatnot. And also keeps out leaks and squeaks. So this is all good stuff. So let's uh, just travel around here. And uh, first off, I want to show you the difference between what's a Taylor welded blank and what you might see in other kind of applications. A Taylor welded blank will take, this is a long piece of steel. So we're looking at a big flat piece of steel and that flat piece of steel on this flat piece of steel is thin. This one is long. Actually, why don't we do this? We can make it look a little bit easier for you by saying that it looks kind of like this. And this piece of steel here would be a little bit higher. And we're trying to weld this seam together here. So we've got these two pieces are being welded uh, with a laser. Uh, that's the normal way. You can also use a mash seam welding, but that's not as popular and it doesn't give you a nicer, as nice a finish as this. So um, that's kind of what, this is what we see on the Y. On the three, uh, it's a little different. So again, we're looking at pieces that would look like this. And the difference here would be that um, they're, they're using something conventional. And then, so you can weld down here, you could weld it like, uh, like arc welded or what have you. And then you could also use spot welds. Okay, I like this better. It's stronger, even from stamping standpoint, it won't rip or tear or whatever. This has uh, been around for a long time. <laughs> probably older than most of you, unfortunately. So, but anyway, let's go and have a look at, let's have a look at the, 
I'm going to go to the other side. I'm, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the Taylor welded blanks on, on the old one, on the, uh, on the model, model Y. And you can see here that uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't see a whole lot of good stuff. It was like Taylor welded blank here and not that much of a difference. Actually, I, I really didn't see much. I, but, but they had a Taylor welded blank here. And then they go back to the conventional welding that I was showing you, this is called lap welding, that they had up here. So this is all lap welded. And then you've got some fancy, uh, some fancy stuff up here, but, but probably a little bit over, overdone. And the reason for that was because, here you can feel the, uh, uh, the uh, lap again right here. This, this is like an uh, old-fashioned way of doing the job. And I'm glad that they've moved away from this toward what you see over there on the, uh, <clears throat> on the Model Y. So uh, if, we look at, uh, if we look at this floor pan, you can see it's got similarities, but it's not similar. So let's, uh, let's have a look at, at the technology that was used um, on, the, uh, on the Model 3 for welding, because I'm trying to remember. Actually, let's use the other side. This is this has got the stuff, but it looks better over here. <clears throat> so, so we look here and we see. I made comments, and I've already gotten comments back about, oh, you're you're just uh, saying stuff that isn't true. But here's the sinusoidal welds here. These look like that, and those are laser welds. All right, and then we have ordinary welds. Okay, but when you start looking at it, it starts to, it starts to, they, they're not consistent like, like over there. And then again, it's not, uh, it's not the right way to do things. When you see these kinds of things like this, where this is called, some people call it squirt, and that's what I do. When, when the, weld, uh, the weld tips are too close to the edge and you'll see it bumps out, might have been too hot as well. So it's hard to say, but these are not, these are not the kind of welds I'd feel happy about. What a difference between that and this. I mean, really and truly, uh, I don't want to go too far because I haven't really seen the rest of this thing, but I'm, I'm thinking that that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good build. I don't have much bad to say about it. Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be talking about, um, let's go over here. We're going to be talking about the, uh, the motors um, in our next segment, I think, I hope. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do is um, we're probably going to have to put this up on a hoist and we'll look over, uh, you can barely see it, but here's the electric power train underneath the, uh, underneath the heat pump. And now you know what a heat pump is. And actually, we should have skill testing questions. So these are the things that we're probably going to be looking at in the next video. Now, I told you that... Uh, we all know that there's times toughs right now. And we also know that um, actually uh, we've got, uh, uh, there isn't much money coming in here. So we've had a suggestion and we thought maybe some people would kind of get a kick out of it. So um, we're gonna take parts like this, okay? So this is, a, uh, this is a, a deflector that's all dirty and I'm gonna even clean it for you so that you can get a chance to see how shiny this is and uh, and we're going to have um, oh I don't know either a either a bidding war or a raffle or something and um, and you're going to have the chance to buy one of these things so this is going to be one of them but this is even more even even more special because this is this 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 is the lone bolt we call it or the lone screw from the trunk tub and um, hopefully Tesla will say, hey, that was a good idea. Let's, uh, let's make all the bolts in, the, um, in the, uh, uh, the tub the same. So all five bolts will be the same. That means that this is a collector's item. So get your bid in a hurry. And so on here, uh, I'll, just, I'll just show you what we're going to do with some of these parts. So, um, so let's just write this in. Tesla Y. No tear down uh, analysis 
and uh, and I'll sign it. I'll sign it here. Okay, so Sandy Monroe, and if you win this, I'll put your name right here where it says front. So, um, so anyway, that's kind of it for right now. Hopefully, we'll all get through this thing, and uh, and I appreciate all the notes and whatnot that you guys are sending me. Uh, we are trying to get to as many of them as we possibly can. A couple of people I've mentioned, uh, and uh, and uh, hopefully, when we get all done, uh, we'll still be in <laughs> still be in business. So these things will be going up on the uh, for sale signs or whatever. Uh, there's other people that are taking care of that, not me. I'm all going to be in charge of signing these things. So anyway, thank you very much for viewing. Tip your, uh, tip your cashier and, uh, and stay safe.